those of you guys who have a Nexus device or just a stock Android version, and it might work for others, I just don't have all the phones, so you want to try it out for yourself. There's a little trick to your phone that I'm going to show you here. Pay attention to the toggles. I can rearrange all these. And maybe you thought you can't do that unless you're rooted, but you do not need that. Now all we're going to do is press and hold on this little, and you can see it spinning. You can see it spinning right there. I'm going to let go. System UI Tuner has been added to settings. Now we're going to scroll down and go to System UI Tuner. Fun for some but not for all. In quick settings, you click onto it, now you can rearrange your stuff here. You can add more tiles, or let's say you don't want to see the invert color, so you're going to bring it to the trash can and throw it away. It doesn't throw it away completely because you can bring it back as you can see invert colors. I want the airplane mode to be in the middle, switch it up, and it switches over. You don't really get to add like cameras or special apps. It's not a rooted feature, it's just more like a rearrangement or changing something on here. Now I love to see a little battery percentage, but I can't tell how many battery percentage I have in that little battery. So what you do instead of having to do another third party application that does this, you do it straight up within the phone. You can see my battery right there, it's nothing inside of it, but I'm going to click on this and now there is a battery percentage of 81%. Instead of having to bring it down and then one more, go to the battery percentage, you'll see your battery percentage all the time inside there. Status bar, you can quickly uncheck and check things on if you don't want to see them in the toggle bar. It might be very useful and more minimal for you or add your features. Tip two, going into your settings, you want to go into about phone and click on your build version seven times with one two three four five six seven and it'll bring up your developer mode but don't worry you're not really gonna mess up your phone it's not like a real hack or root thing so you can you know revert back to it so we see developer options here there's a few things in here that I do not know what it means so I don't even move it I don't even care about it you can see there's USB debugging mode that's if you want to do some kind of computer hookup to do like tethering some sort with other applications or like bug reporting. I'm going to hold the power button you can see that's all we get. Select on that, now we'll press the power button, now we get bug report. You can show touches so if you want to see where your finger is hitting things, there's a little bubble there underneath my finger, you can't really tell. But if you want to see where it touches so make sure it's registering, you can have that on and off. And this is where I used to come to all the time to change the animation scale because maybe the way things pop up or move, you see that, that movement right there that comes up. We can move it into slower speeds with the five times and you will see the animations are starting to get really slow. So now I'll push that and you see that? The animations move very smoothly and very slowly. So if you want to make your phone feel faster, you want to set it at like 0.5 or even turn them off completely. It just looks and feels like it's sped it. And if you go off, it means you're going to save some battery as well and everything's going to just show up. It's not going to have any animation, it's just going to show up. Strict mode, show CPU usage, and click on that. You get your CPUs there showing up. Every time you leave an activity, it'll close it so it's not running in the background. You can see background process limit. If there are apps that you don't really use but you still want to keep installed, you can, you can just touch on that. And inactive means it's not going to try to run or keep working in the background. It's going to stop it. So you got ways to turn them off if they're not active but you still want to keep them. And that's also a step if you wanted to root. Maybe you don't have enough internal memory. You already removed your pictures, videos, and moved files over to make room, but you still don't have enough. Well, this is what you gotta check out. Go into your settings, go into your storage, and USB, it might say something different. Just go to your storage. As you can see here, I've only used less than six gigabytes on my 64 gigabyte. The reason why I don't have a lot of stuff taken because I remove a lot of apps, I remove a lot of games, and all my pictures and videos go over the cloud on my Google photos so I will always have enough room but we can see the apps are what takes the most memory on my phone but going to the bottom we can see cache data there's 1.2 gigabytes of data being used which can be released and nothing bad will happen to your phone let's clear that I'm going to clear that I've seen it up to 5 gigabytes of cache data now look at my memory the 4.60 now I release more memory for me to be able to download if you weren't able to. So that's another tip there. But also guys, I recommend storing your pictures on the cloud. 
tip number four, disabling applications. Those of you guys who have a lot of bloatware or applications that you never use but you can't remove them because you're not rooted, play movies. Now, I can't remove play movies. And maybe your home launcher does not allow you to do it this way, but you can see I'm gonna go to app info. Now, if you wanna go into your apps, you wanna go into your settings, go to apps, and find that application again, Google Play Movies. Now, I can't uninstall it, because I have to have it, but I'm gonna force stop it. You don't need to press that at all, but it'll say computing there, which you don't have to wait for, and you press disable. Now, it says if you disable this app, other apps may no longer function as intended. Your data will also be deleted, which I'm totally fine, because I don't ever use it. So I'm gonna disable the app. Now, it doesn't uninstall it from your phone. It just goes back to a factory version of uninstalling. It is disabled now. Let's go back into the drawer you will see that it's no longer there. So I won't be annoyed with applications that are in my drawer or it just won't be popping up or stuff being updated for it because I don't have it ready for it to try to work. So that's a disabled option. If you needed to bring it back, go back into your applications. If you don't have the option to choose from disabled, enabled, or applications, it's always gonna be at the very bottom. You click on that, you see disabled. And those are the disabled applications. And lastly, for tip number five, we want to go into NFC. My NFC is always checked on. It does not drain any battery, anything extra. There's no problem having it on. So what about NFC? Not only can you make mobile payments, paying in stores with your Android Pay, Samsung Pay, they use the same NFC, which is near field communication. But this is where it comes really handy. Let's say you wanted to do a application without the need of inputting any information I'm gonna open up offer up now I'm using my Nexus 7 tablet here but it can be any other Android phone with NFC now I'm just gonna combine these together in the back and my NFC chip should be right there now you can see it got smaller and I'm going to touch this and it's gonna beam it right over to the tablet here and there's the application right there without me having to put any information because I have this app open. Your friend might have been watching this app and he wants it. Same as Clash Royale. Put it over, cast it over, and there we have it, Clash Royale. NFC is great for a lot of reasons. You can even buy little tags to make profiles and a lot of things about NFC. NFC has been around for Android for around like five years or more probably. And a lot of people don't understand them and I haven't obviously educated a lot of people about it but I've used it and I love it and it's pretty much been a mobile standard ever since. So go educate yourself on NFC. Other people have great videos out there for you to check them out. So there you guys have it. Those are my five tips using my Nexus devices here. This is 2015. Nexus 6P, Nexus 7, the only devices that I have right now. Even though I performed all these on my Nexus device, doesn't mean that you have to have this phone in order for those features to work. But it's definitely worth it for you to go test it out for yourself. And there you guys have it. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you guys next time. Later.